Hey there everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to change the background for your credit system with closing credit system. So I'm just in my project here for the credit system. Let's go ahead and play really fast. You can see right away that we have this green background. But something that a few people have been wondering is how they can change the background and have it still work with this fade. Okay, you can see that everything nicely fades between the background and being on the screen. So let's go ahead and look at that. It's actually pretty simple to do. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to head into the widget where those where the background is located. So go into content blueprints and then go into widget blueprints and credits roller. Okay, this is sort of the base widget that contains everything. Okay, so we can see right away we have this nice green background that we can see here. Go ahead and select that. That is background image in the hierarchy. Let's go ahead and change the image to background or to whatever background you want to use. Background is just what I'll be using, which is just this gradient background. Okay, and you can see that after we've changed that, that only changed part of it. Okay, you can see we still have on the top and bottom, we still have that green. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that as well. So this green here, that's actually the mask image that helps the text fade. So what we're going to do is we just need to head into this material. So head into foreground mask, which is in closing credit system materials and foreground mask. And then you can see we have this image to mask. Go ahead and change the texture on that. I'll just change that to, you just want to change that to whichever texture you're using for the background. So in my case, it's just background. So let's just go ahead and save our material. And if we need to, we can apply. And go back into credits roller and you should see it should be, it should be fully using this background. Okay, now let's just go ahead and play and make sure it all works. It's kind of hard to read this text because it doesn't blend too well. But you can see right away that it is using the background, and our text fades perfectly as well. We can view that in full screen. Okay, so everything looks good. But another thing I'm going to address is a few people don't want to use a background but they actually want to use their scene as the background. So say you had a really pretty level, and you just wanted to, I don't know, move the camera around the level, kind of use that. Kind of like I have in the screenshots of this pack, I have a screenshot with the kite demo. Let me just show you what I'm talking about really quick. So here's the Marketplace page. Uh, this screenshot right here. I'm using the I'm using this as the background. Okay? So if you want to use a scene as a background, that's pretty simple as well. Let me just go over that for you really quick. So one thing you might initially try is just setting the opacity of both of these to zero for the mask and the background. However, there's one thing you might not like about that. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and play. Okay, so you can see I obviously have, um, I've gotten into the background. And you can see right away the credits do work. However, one thing you might notice is that the credits do not fade. Okay, so you can see there's no fade here. Um, and it doesn't look the cleanest. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you can still keep the fade and still use your scene as the background. So firstly, let's go into Credits Roller. Let me just set the opacity back to 1 on these, since I did reset it to 0. OK, and then I'll compile and save that. So what we need to do to use our scene as the background is use something called a texture target, or sorry, a render target. OK, so let's go ahead and create that. Essentially, what a render target is is a camera that outputs itself to a material. Okay, so let's go ahead and 
I'll just go into the content. And what we need to do is just in your classes area, go ahead and search for scene capture 2D. Okay, and then drag that into the scene. This will act as our camera. And I'll go over using uh, other cameras as well. Okay, so let's just position that. I'll just make that aim down a little bit. Okay. And I won't save the map. Okay, so we've got our scene capture 2D placed in the scene. Now look in the details panel at texture target. This should currently be empty by default. But go ahead and click on that. We need to make a new render target. Okay, I'll just save that in content. That should be fine. Go ahead and save that. And now go into your go into wherever you saved the render target. And you can see the thumbnail, it should update with the scene view from that camera, like so. Okay, let's go ahead and open up our render target. And something you might want to do is look in the details panel and look the look and see we have size X as well as size Y. I'm going to increase the resolution to 1920 by 1080. And it'll vary by game, but that's a pretty general resolution you might want to use. And then we can save this texture target and click the little X to close it. Okay, now that we have our render target, we need to do one more thing, which is go ahead and right click on the render target and do create material. Okay, now let's open up this material. And you can see this material, this is a material of the scene. Okay. So it just has this texture sample from the render target. Let's go ahead and save our material. And now that we have a material that shows our scene from that camera at least, let's go ahead and go into credits roller. And then click on the background image in the hierarchy. And let's change the image brush to that render target material. Okay, and I will compile and save. Now, after we've done that, we should see this little message that says, this material does not use the UI material domain. Let's go ahead and fix that. So go into your render target material that we just created, click in an empty space, and look in the details panel and look at material domain. Let's change that from surface to user interface. Now let's go ahead and reconnect these two nodes will connect the top pin of the texture sample to the final color, like you can see here. Now let's save and apply our material. You can see our material does indeed use the scene. So now go into credits roller, and you can see we can see our scene in there. And it's kind of hard to show you. Let me, uh, let me just kind of make this smaller. Now, so this render target, actually will update. So say we were to move our camera around while the credits were playing, that would update. Okay, let's go ahead and just move this. Yeah, so as you can see, it does update with the scene, which is what we want. Okay, so we've changed, we've changed the background image. Now let's change the mask image again. So head into foreground mask which is in, again, in Closing Credit System, Materials, and Foreground Mask. And again, we'll change the image to mask to our render target material. And then save and apply. Okay, now if we head into Credits Roller, we can see we can see our scene in there. So now let's go ahead and play, see if it works. Okay, so you can see right away we can see our scene, and everything fades fine as well. You can see the fade, or sorry, the text, the credits fading at the bottom and top. Kind of hard to see at the top because of the, the lighting, but you can see it does work. Now, to make sure everything works as we want, I'm going to, on tick, I'm going to move this render target backwards so that we can make sure everything updates properly. So in my level blueprint, on event tick, first I want to select the scene capture 2D, 
and then right click in the level blueprint and create a reference to scene capture 2D. And then I will just go ahead and do add local offset, add actor local offset. I'll connect that up to event tick. Now I just want to add one unit. I'll just add one unit to the X location every frame. Okay, now let's go ahead and play. And you can see that it is updating properly. I'll maybe do negative 1x instead so it goes the other direction. Okay, now you can see it is moving. Everything fades properly, and it all works out, and it works as it should. Now, one thing about using render targets is that, say you had, I don't know, say you wanted to display, to instead of displaying the render target, you wanted to say show the character's point of view. All you would need to do for that just attach a render target or a scene capture 2D to your character wherever the camera location is. Okay, and you can also change the capture source. Uh, instead of doing scene color, we can do final color, which has post processing, which you can see looks a little bit differently just because of the post processing. You'll probably want to use final color on your render target on your scene capture 2D, but that is all you need to do to change the background image or use a quote tr um, transparent image, I guess you could say, because really what we're doing is we just have a background of our scene. Um, yeah, that's all you need to do to change it, and that will be all for this video. If you have any other questions for closing credit system, you can just contact me wherever, whether it be the forums, uh, you can leave a comment on the Marketplace page, you can email me, you can contact me on Skype, uh, just whatever works best for you. But that'll be it for this video, and thanks for watching.